Hi, everyone. Alice Syke, um, back for part two of um, The Art of Simple Living. And um, again, for informational purposes only. So let's just get right back to it. Um, again, not doing a hundred of these items, but I've picked out uh, several of these practices. So, a day without working is like a day without eating. And I think of work as something that will nurture or educate you. And from my perspective, you know, I'll add that I see it as something that helps me feel a sense of being useful. Um, don't be bound by or uh, by a single perspective. Okay, uh, I remember reading about the, um, the sprinter Michael Johnson, you know, who ran in a very uh, upright position, and his coaches tried to change that to make him more uh, aerodynamic. Uh, but in the end, Michael Johnson ran his way and in the process broke many world records and Olympic records. And I'm sure you can apply many scenarios uh, to this idea. Now, what purpose does hard work serve? So the author states that doing difficult work makes it easier to respond to life. And this sounds to me like the stoic practice of doing things that are uncomfortable. For example, you know, occasionally sleeping on the floor, even though you have a nice, comfortable bed available. It uh, makes it easier to handle uncomfortable situations when they arise in life. Okay, and next one. Some things you can appreciate only when you do them yourself. Now, as a therapist, I would try to put myself in the shoes of clients to see if I could get a sense of their feelings, pain, etc. Now, of course, even if I experienced uh, the same event, it does not necessarily mean I experienced the same emotions or the emotions at the same uh, level. Again, I'm sure you can come up with your own uh, examples, but, but being involved in an accident may affect us differently. Doing the same job may affect us differently. You know, you may love it and I may uh, hate it. Okay, so what I do, you know, is going to be kind of personalized. Now, cast away the three poisons. Now, the three poisons, according to the author, are greed, anger, and ignorance. So with greed, it's easy to fall into the trap of, you know, once you get something, wanting something else. So without even having the time to appreciate what you just got. Uh, with anger, it's easy to get angry. And I'm thinking very angry, you know, about things that are best left to just float away. Um, you know, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with anger per se. It's just if it becomes like a frequent visitor and, and it's expressed in, you know, a, a problematic way, you know, it raises your blood pressure a lot or it injures relationships, things like that. And then ignorance, as the author puts it, is a, a state of foolishness. And with ignorance, I just think that, you know, it's easy to be less ignorant with the easy availability of knowledge that is at our fingertips. Okay, next one, don't be too rushed or too relaxed. And to me, this brings me back to college when I had to, to study for exams. I didn't want to get too keyed up in my studying or during my exams, but I didn't want to be so relaxed um, that I didn't take my studying seriously. Uh, the idea is that, you know, a little bit of stress can be beneficial while uh, too much uh, can be detrimental. Now, uh, if you fuss over black and white, you miss out on the beauty of the gray, according to the author. Uh, now, I believe you can align this with CBT and the idea of see seeing things in only black and white. You know, it sets up this rigid mindset if you see things only in terms of black and white, yes or no, all or none, right or wrong, dead or alive, you know. Uh, think about how your perspective may change uh, if you see some of the gray. Next item, skillfully detach, pay no attention, is also a, a Buddha wisdom. So this takes me to Marcus Aurelius. He basically said something to, to the effect of, why would I concern myself with, with what someone else thinks about me. OK, 
Okay, now my mind is presupposes, you know, that I'm not engaging in some sort of inappropriate behavior. I'm not a psychopath or anything like that. But yeah, basically, you know, if I think I'm, I'm doing fine. Okay, why am I concerned about what that other person thinks about me? Okay, be grateful for every day, even the ordinary. And I really like this one, uh, you know, because it's easy to get caught up in trying to chase highs and adrenaline rushes, things like that. But I really like the idea of, you know, just dare to be ordinary. And there's a lot out there, you know, uh, out there and in here, you know, in your own mind that is available and is so interesting. Now, wanting more leads to suffering. I've kind of talked about this already. Uh, not being satisfied with what you have leads to uh, dissatisfaction. And I think of Cheryl Crow here, um, where she says, it's not having what you want, it's wanting what you got. All right. And finally, <laughs> excuse me, um, try taking care of something. The author mentions how a tomato um, that you buy from the store is different from the one you grow. And I would have to say that the tomatoes I grow definitely taste better than the ones I buy. Uh, and it's also funny, but if I, if I make something, I do little art projects or whatever, it somehow seems to be worth a lot more than any similar item that is made by someone else. Okay, and that is it. And uh, see you later. Bye.